Good morning. Welcome to Hitchcock Presbyterian Church this morning on this happy New Year's Day. It is a joy for us to gather together and to worship. I especially want to welcome all those who are joining us virtually as well this morning and any visitors who are with us this day. Uh, I have just a few announcements for you. The first being that uh, since it is New Year's Day and uh, we expected exactly what we have here this morning, we don't have uh, our nursery is not available, and there's no Sunday school this morning. We're all just going to stay and worship the whole time together uh, and, and be uh, together in this space. Uh, let's see, for the offering as well, we don't have ushers today, so the offering is right there in the middle. Uh, if you want to give at some point before you leave, that would be wonderful, uh, or you can always give virtually using the QR code that is on the back of the bulletin. Uh, let's see here. This Wednesday night, uh, we are not starting up with our Wednesdays at Hitchcock uh, yet this Wednesday night, but we are having youth group. Uh, and the youth groups are going to be going bowling. Uh, and so please watch your email for that. Parents of youth, all middle school and high school, we're going to go bowling together. We'll eat dinner together. We'll have a lot of fun. So watch your emails for that so that you have all of the information uh, about that youth bowling outing. Finally, uh, if you have not turned in your pledge for 2023, the Finance Committee has asked that I remind you to do so. It is now January 1st, which means we are into 2023. So please uh, consider getting that in as quickly as possible if you are able to do so and would like to pledge with us for 2023. I believe those are all of our announcements. You all know the people who remain on our prayer list, and we will keep them in our prayers during this service together. Let us stand and join in the call to worship. <clears throat> Arise, shine, for the light of the world has come. Darkness covers the earth and its people but the radiance of God's light burns away its shadows, illuminates the smallest corner, and heralds in the start of a new dawn, where hearts no longer fear, souls might be set free, and sister shall follow brother, nation shall follow nation, and kings and princes bow down in awe before the one who comes to reign. Arise, shine, for the light of the world has come. Amen.
Please be seated. <clears throat> Friends, as we begin this new year together, let us start by bringing our unworthiness before God, by confessing our sins together as one community, and then in silent reflection, bringing to bear all that we are and laying it before our God who we know is both merciful and just. Join with me in our prayer of confession and then in silent prayer. Ever patient God, we are a people who live in thick darkness. We stumble around bombarded by news of war and poverty, famine and genocide, injustice and oppression. Help us be people of the light, shining your light of righteousness, peace, and joy into all the dark places of our lives and world. Unlock the mystery and glory of the babe born in Bethlehem. Turn our aimless wanderings into a journey of purpose guided by your star. Let the light break into our lives and our world and transform us into people of the light. Amen. Hear the good news. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life is finished. Behold, new life has begun. Brothers and sisters, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. <laughs> Chelsea's day, oh, Gloria, Gloria, Alleluia, Alleluia. Gloria, Gloria, in Excelsis day, oh, Gloria, Gloria, Alleluia, Alleluia. The peace of Christ be with you. Let us take a moment to greet one another as a people who are loved and forgiven and freed. Let us pray. Holy God, just as the Magi were led to the Christ child by the light of a star, so illuminate our path by the light of your word, that we might encounter you and be made new. Amen. Our scripture reading for today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2 verses 13 to 23. Now after they had left 
An angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night, and went to Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet, out of Egypt I have called my son. When Herod saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, he was infuriated, and he sent and killed all the children in and around Bethlehem who were two years old or under, according to the time that he had learned from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophets Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, wailing and loud lamentation. Rachel weeping for her children, she refused to be consoled because they are no more. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who were seeking the child's life are dead. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was ruling over Judea, in the place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And after being warned in a dream, he went away to the district of Galilee. There he made his home in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Every once in a while, Christmas Day and New Year's Day fall on Sunday morning. It happened the first year I was here at Hitchcock in 2016, and of course it's happened again this year, but it won't happen for another 11 years after today. Admittedly, most clergy and church staff don't get very excited when this happens. After the energy and effort and excitement expelled during the Advent season and especially on Christmas Eve, as much as we love Sunday mornings around here, the idea of working on Christmas Day is a little bit tough. It can be a drag for the family of the clergy as well because Christmas morning routines have to be shifted around. Present opening delayed, lunch delayed. But you know what, it's Christmas morning and so you suck it up, you get up for it because after all it is a religious holiday and it is right that we should come together in the sanctuary on Christmas Day and worship with one another. And this particular Christmas Day last week was especially special because we had a good crowd here, which surprised many of us, and we had this wonderful baptism that we had last Christmas Sunday. Having New Year's Day on a Sunday is actually much, much harder. Even if you aren't out partying the night before, it's still a late night, especially with teenagers and young adults to worry about where they are and what it is that they are doing. And as you can see, this morning church attendance is not as full as it usually is on a Sunday morning when New Year's Day falls on a Sunday. People are tired from the busy holidays, tired from New Year's Eve festivities, tired with the thought of heading back to school and heading back to work this week. More and more people are tired, it seems, these days. And New Year's Day isn't really a religious holiday after all, so it's a little harder to get pumped up for it. 
All that being said, I find myself extraordinarily glad to be here in this place with you on New Year's Day. And I am really glad that you are all here this morning and those of you joining us virtually are here as well because it occurs to me that gathering together to worship on the very first day of the calendar year is actually a wonderful thing for us to do. It sets the tone for the new year. It sets the tone of putting God first in our lives, of putting worship first in our lives, of placing our trust in the new year in the God, the baby that we just celebrated on Christmas Day. We have the opportunity here together and for all those gathering from home, we have the opportunity to set the tone moving forward. Now I'm not talking here about New Year's resolutions, about promising to work out more or to eat better or do more yoga. I'm talking about the tone of our lives, the way in which we encounter the world around us as Christians who are filled up with the Spirit of God. And I'll admit, in terms of tone, our scripture for this morning is tough. It's the story of King Herod being infuriated with the Magi feeling threatened by Jesus, and so ordering the slaughter of the innocents of any child in and around Bethlehem that is under the age of two. It's not exactly a hopeful tone to set for the new year, but the reason that I really like this text for New Year's Day is because it is focused entirely on fulfilling prophecy. Verses 14 and 15. Then Joseph got up and took the child and his mother by night and went to Egypt. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet, Out of Egypt I have called my son. In reference to the slaughter of the innocents in verse 17, it says this, Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, wailing and loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be consoled, because they are no more. And then in verse 23 from our text for today, it says, There he made his home in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene. In just these ten verses, three times prophecy is fulfilled. Three times Joseph is told in a dream to get up and to take Mary and to take the child and to go somewhere for the purpose of fulfilling prophecy that had been spoken in the Old Testament. Even Herod's evil actions as disgusting and horrible as they are, according to the Gospel of Matthew, serve the purpose of fulfilling prophecy. For Matthew, fulfilling prophecy was everything. Lining up the Christmas story with the religious expectations of his Jewish Christian audience was important for lending legitimacy to the theological statements he was making about Jesus himself. As we begin a new year here at Hitchcock Church, I like the idea of us starting with the prophetic witness. The idea that whatever may come, whatever challenges, that there is a divine plan being played out on a cosmic stage. Unfortunately, we all know that that theology is a slippery slope that it is a pathway toward cliché tropes about God in the midst of tragedy. The kind of theological laziness that makes no room for personal responsibility or for the seemingly random evil that affects so many innocent people. But still, if we can avoid that slippery slope, I like the idea of us starting with prophetic witness. A new prophecy for a new year. 
a new prophecy that sets aside the need for violence to fulfill the will of God. A new prophecy that challenges the status quo that leads to the slaughter of so many innocents. I saw a great cartoon this week. It was an old clipping of Calvin and Hobbes. And Calvin asks the question, what will this new year bring? And Hobbes responds, 365 opportunities. Today is day one of 365 opportunities to participate in the kingdom of God to live in the hope of the new Jerusalem where hope and love and joy and peace reign supreme and there will be no more weeping because God will wipe away every tear that falls. It's that city of light where the lion and the kid and the fatling dwell together and a little child does lead them. This is day one of 365 opportunities for us to participate in bending the arc of the moral universe toward that reality that we just read about in the season of Advent. Will there be suffering? Will there be slaughtering of innocents in places near and far? Will we fail on many of those 365 days and simply add more darkness to a night already devoid of stars? Of course. But the joy of a new day and the joy of a new year is that every day is a new opportunity. That joy cometh in the morning when that sun rises and we have the opportunity to try again. To try to be kinder. To try to be more joyful. To try to be more loving. To give more and to laugh more and to be filled with gratitude more. To be the people who are in the world but not of the world. People who don't fall victim to the petty infighting and the ugliness and the voyeuristic spectator sports of human infighting. This is day one of 365 opportunities to be the people that God created us to be. Prophecy, as it refers to future events, is a really interesting topic to study because it doesn't doesn't always work out exactly as the prophecy states. Jonah was sent to Nineveh to prophesy about their destruction, but then God changed God's mind. Paul said that there were some in his own generation who would not die before the second coming of Christ, and yet here we are still waiting. And so for me, prophecy is not about predicting the exact future. Prophecy is about promise and possibility. There's this great scene in the movie The Matrix, where the main character goes to visit the oracle, a person who is able to see into the future. And in the midst of their conversation, she says, don't worry about the vase. And of course, at that moment, he turns around and he knocks over a glass vase and he breaks it and he turns back to her and he asks, how did you know? And she says something very interesting. She says, what's really going to bake your noodle later is whether or not you would have still broken it if I hadn't said anything. In other words, how much does our expectation of the future affect what the future brings. What exactly is the causal relationship between prophecy and action, between biblical witness and events, between Christian hope and Christian despair? And that's what I mean when I say that we have the opportunity to set the tone for the new year right here and right now together. Christ is born. Newness is all around us. 2023 is in its infancy, and we don't just walk the road that is laid out before us. We help build the road by walking it together. Let me say that again. 
We don't just walk the road that is laid out before us, but we help to build the road by walking it together. This is day one of 365 opportunities for us to rise up and to let the light of Christ shine in this world. It may be New Year's Day, and yeah, I might be a little bit tired this morning, but I am also pumped because today we get a new prophecy for a new year. A prophecy that is filled with promise and with possibility for all that God can do through us in the days to come. The God who called to the shepherds and called to the magi still beckons us to go to the manger and then to rise up and to go by a different road. Arise, shine. For your light has come. Christ is born into a manger for you. Do not be afraid of what this new year will bring. Rather, let us open our eyes and our hearts and our spirits and be filled with excitement for the possibilities of God's new prophecy for this new year. Amen. Please remain standing as we affirm our faith in God together using these words from the Confession of 1967. We believe God's God's sovereign sovereign love love is a mystery mystery beyond the reach of of man's mind. mind. Human Human thought thought ascribes to God's superlatives of power, wisdom, wisdom, and goodness. goodness. But God God reveals reveals his love in Jesus Christ Christ by By showing showing power power in the form of a servant, servant, wisdom in the folly of the cross, and goodness in receiving receiving sinful men. men. The power power of God's God's love in Christ to transform the world discloses that the Redeemer is the Lord and Creator who made all things to serve the purpose of God's love. Amen. You may be seated. Friends, we make the road by walking together in this new year. So let us take a moment to consider the many gifts that God has shared with us as people and as a community. 
For those of you looking to pledge or to give an offering today, we have a plate at the back of the room. We also have giving information on the back of our bulletin. And for those of you who are new or maybe joining us for long, the first time in a long time, we have a welcome card in the pew that you can fill out and we will be in touch with you about anything that is going on in our community or that you want to know about. We continue our worship with the receiving of gifts.
Come and fill our hearts, O good and gracious God, who created all and is above all and who longs to be all in all. We thank you for this beautiful first day and what we hope will be a beautiful new year. We thank you for this time to gather, to hear your word, to sing in common, and to hold space in common for all of the things we hope for in the year to come, all the fears and worries we carry with us from the year before, and everything else that we may hold in our hearts. We thank you for the coming of Christ as a child, for the time that we have spent together in this Christmas season with those that we love, for being a light to us. But Lord, even as we celebrate this light coming into the world among us, we recognize that there is darkness in ourselves, in our communities, and all around us. We recognize that there are ways in which we are called to respond to this darkness that we have not. There are still those amongst us who are sick and suffering, those that are lonely, sad, and afraid, those that are oppressed and marginalized by systems that we benefit from. So Lord, we ask that in all of these things, in facing all of this darkness, you help us to be the light. That you help us to not only follow your way, but to be your way. To make our way together as we long to fulfill the promises of your inbreaking kingdom. A kingdom of peace, of love, of joy, and of hope, not just for us as a people in this room, not just for us as a wider community, but as a whole and new humanity, renewed by the work of your Son in all of us and in all of your creation. Lord, we pray all of these things in the name of that Son, your Son, who taught us to pray using these words, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, all would be thy name. Thank you. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Holy Jesus, every day keep us in the narrow way. Day one of 365 opportunities. I am looking forward to next week when our choir will be back with us. And we'll have our children's sermon and Sunday school and nursery care and, of course, most of all, coffee hour. When we'll all get to gather together and these pews will be full again. But I have truly enjoyed these past couple of Sundays where we have gathered together for special purpose to lift up our voices in joy and thanksgiving. And I pray that that joy and thanksgiving goes with all of you into this new year. Commit you all now to the mercy the power, to the faithfulness of the eternal Lord our God. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and the communion of all the saints be with you this day and forever and ever. Amen. Amen.